हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू टीचिंग पाठशाला टूडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज अबाउट द एबसेसिक एसिड एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट बायोसिंथेसिस मैकेनिज्म सिग्नलिंग पाथवे एंड द फंक्शन ऑफ एबसेसिक एसिड दिस इज दिक्सटीन पार्ट ऑफ फाइटो हार्मोन एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन रेस्ट ऑफ दिफ्टीन पार्ट दैन आई विल मैंशन द लिंक ऑफ ऑल द पार्ट इन द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो दिस टॉपिक विल भी बेनिफिशियल फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हुआ प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द सी एस आई एंड नेट गेट लाइफ साइंस एंड द स्टूडेंट्स हुआ परसुंग इन एम एस सी एंड द बी एस सी कोर्सेस In the end of this video, we are going to solve some CSI NET question that has been asked in the previous year. First of all, we are going to see some important points regarding the discovery of ABA or the abscisic acid. So, this abscisic acid is supposed to be the stress hormone and was first identified and chemically characterized by the Frederick T. Edicott. This was first identified while studying about the compound that was responsible for the abscission of the cotton fruits. Abscission means the falling off. Okay. so this abscisic was as it was first identified when it has been seen that there are some kind of a compound that is responsible behind the falling off of a cotton fruits from a plant so it was originally called as the abscisin 2 because it was thought to play a major role in the abscission of a fruits at the same time there was a identification of one another group that was named as the dormin because they thought that that this dormin is supposed to play a important role in maintaining or enhancing the bird's dormancy after that these all compounds were given a name that was the abscisic acid because the major function that was identified that was related to this abscisic acid or dormin or abscisin 2 was the abscission process in a plant now let's talk about the abscisic acid and in short form we used to call it as the aba so aba is one of the class of a plant hormone or phytohormone and it is regarded as the stress hormone because it used to play a very important role whenever a plant is going through any kind of a stress condition along with that the ethylene and the abscisic acid both are supposed to be regarded as the hormone that is supposed to promote the senescence in a plant so this ethylene and the abscisic acid will be a positive regulator of a senescence in a plant third point it inhibit growth and the stomatal opening particularly when the plant is under a environmental stress and this thing we are going to discuss in a detail way in a upcoming slide that it used to inhibit the growth in a plant as well as it used to inhibit the opening of a stomata whenever a plant is going through any kind of a environmental stress fourth point another important function is its regulation of a seed's maturation and the dormancy so the abscisic acid is supposed to be the one of the most important hormone that used to regulate or that used to maintain the dormancy of a seeds when we were studying about the gibberellin we have seen that the breakdown of a dormancy is supposed to be performed by a gibberellic acid phytohormone but the maintenance of the dormancy of a seed is supposed to be played by that role is played by a abscisic acid so gibberellin is going to break down the dormancy of a seed whereas the abscisic acid it is going to promote the dormancy of a seeds and if we talk about the location of this abscisic acid synthesis so this is synthesized in the vascular tissue of a leaves and transported via a xylem phloem or it may include the parenchyma cells too now we are going to talk about the biosynthesis pathway of a abscisic acid so it used to follow the pathway of a isoprenoid unit that is mainly it is going to start the process with a precursor molecule that is the ipp and the full form of this ipp is the isopentanyl diphosphate or you can say it as the isopentanyl pyrophosphate so this is a isoprenoid unit and the overall precursor molecule is supposed to be this ipp we have already seen many pathway that used to follow this isoprenoid pathway especially that uh, i think it was in case of a gibberellin that is also uh, going to follow the ipp pathway only that is the isoprenoid pathway so now let's start with the pathway so the precursor molecule will be a ipp or the isopentanyl diphosphate then this ipp with the presence of some intermediates and different enzymes it is going to convert it into a zeaxanthin before converting to the zeaxanthin it you this ipp used to pass from the intermediate compound that is known as the beta carotene so this you should remember that the during the biosynthesis pathway of a aba there is a intermediate formation that is known as the beta carotene and after that there is a conversion of that beta carotene into a zeaxanthin so this beta carotene is supposed to be the intermediate compound between the ipp and the zeaxanthin so initially the ipp is going to convert into a beta carotene and that beta beta carotene is going to convert in uh, convert into a zeaxanthin this ipp i have already informed you in my previous video that it is a five carbon compound and when it is going to convert into a zeaxanthin so zeaxanthin is a 40 carbon compound so now you can imagine that there is a huge intermediate compound that is going to be there in between the ipp and the zeaxanthin 
because the successive addition of IPP will going to convert the 5 carbon IPP into a 40 carbon zeaxanthin. Now this 40 carbon zeaxanthin is going to convert into a voilaxanthin in the presence of a zeaxanthin epoxidase and in short form we used to call it as the ZEP. So ZEP is going to stand for the zeaxanthin ep epoxidase and this enzyme is going to help in the conversion of a zeaxanthin into a voilaxanthin. This voilaxanthin is again a 40 carbon compound. Now this voilaxanthin is going to convert into a neoxanthin and again this neoxanthin is a 40 carbon compound. Till the formation of a neoxanthin, all the previous pathway or all the previous compound were going to be formed in a plastid. So till IPP to the neoxanthin, all this pathway is going to take place in a plastid. But after the formation of a neoxanthin, that neoxanthin is going to make an overall contribution so that the product is going to enter into the cytosol. So from this point, all the product and the reaction is now going to take place in a cytosol. So the neoxanthin with the help of an enzyme that is known as the NCED and the full form of this NCED is the 9 cis epoxy carotenoids dioxygenase. So this enzyme is going to help in the conversion of a neoxanthin into a xanthosine. And this xanthosine is going to be there in a cytosol. This xanthosine is a 15 carbon compound. Now in the cytosol, this xanthosine is going to convert into a ABA aldehyde. And finally, this ABA aldehyde is going to convert into a ABA that is the abscisic acid. So all this compound that is the xanthosine, ABA aldehyde and the last product that was the abscisic acid, all these compounds are the 15 carbon compound. So this you should remember that the abscisic acid is a 15 carbon compound and that is why sometimes it is known as the sesquiterpene because sesquiterpene is going to have a 15 carbon and the 15 carbon compound is also known as the furnacyl diphosphate are, uh, and the short form of the furnacyl diphosphate is the FPP. So aldehyde is a 15 carbon compound that is why it is regarded as the sesquiterpene as well as the furnacyl diphosphate. The biosynthesis of this ABA is also going to take place in a cytosol, okay. So in our diagram like uh, I think there is a shortening of that arrow that is representing the location of a cytosol but it should be till the ABA, fine. So this will be like the xanthosine, ABA, aldehyde and the ABA, all three compounds is going to make its synthesis in a cytosol. Now let's talk about the different functions of abscisic acid. So the first function is the inhibition in a stomatal opening whenever there is a stress condition and about this we are going to see one signaling pathway in the upcoming slide. The second function is that it used to regard it as the stress hormone. The role of a ABA in freezing, salt and water stress lead to the characterization of this abscisic acid as a stress hormone. Whenever there is a water stress like the drought condition, at that time the concentration of the abscisic acid in our leaves is going to increase up to a 50 times in a stress condition. And with the studies, it has been concluded that this is the most dramatic changes in the concentration that has been reported for any hormone in response to an environmental signal. The redistribution or the biosynthesis of a ABA is very effective in causing the stomatal closure and its accumulation in a stressed leaves play an important role in the reduction of a water loss by a transpiration process under a water stress condition. So it used to inhibit the overall stomatal opening as well as it used to inhibit the water loss by inhibiting the transpiration in a plant and in this way the ABA is going to help the plant in a water stress condition. The third function is in a root and the shoot growth. So in actual the ABA used to promote the root growth and inhibit the shoot growth whenever there is a low water potential. This ABA has different effect on growth of a root and shoot and the effect are strongly dependent on the water status of a plant. For understanding this function, that is the function number 3, we first have to suppose that there is a two seedling. First is the wild type seedling that is going to show the normal level of our ABA and second is supposed to be our ABA deficient or the VV Paris mutant. That means this mutant or the ABA mutant is not going to have a normal level of our ABA in that. So, we are considering the two case, first is the wild type seedling and second is the mutant seedling which is not going to have a normal concentration of a ABA in that. So in the third function the statement was the ABA used to promote a root growth and inhibit the shoot growth in a low water potential. So the first case about which we are going to talk is the high water potential. Let's see what is going to ha happen whenever there is a high water potential okay and we are going to see the effect of this high water potential on both the seedling first will be the wild type seedling and second will be the ABA deficient seedling. 
so in first case when the water supply is high or you can consider it as the high water potential at that time the shoot growth is supposed to be a greater in a wild type plant because it is going to have a normal endogenous aba level okay as compared to the aba deficient mutant the re reduced shoot growth in a aba deficient mutant could be due to the part of a excessive water loss from a leaves and if you talk about the second case that is the water limiting case or the low water potential at that time the opposite is going to happen that means the shoot growth is greater in the aba deficient or the mutant as compared to the wild type okay because the endogenous aba act as a signal to reduce the shoot growth only under the water stress condition so humne yahan pe all of total two cases consider kiye hain first case kya hai कि हमने टोटल दो सीडलिंग्स लिया है फर्स्ट सीडलिंग जो लिया है वो है वाइल्ड टाइप जिसमें कि ओवरऑल जो ए बी ए का बायोसिंथेसिस प्रोसेस है वो एकदम नॉर्मल होगा और दूसरा जो हमने सीडलिंग लिया है वो है म्यूटेंट सीडलिंग दैट इज मेनली ए बी ए डेफिशेंट सीडलिंग उसका मतलब क्या हुआ कि जो बायोसिंथिस पाथवे है वो इस म्यूटेंट सीडलिंग में नहीं होने वाला या फिर डिफेक्टिव वे में होने वाला है तो पहला केस हम ये देखने वाले हैं जब जब वाटर पोटेंशियल जो है वो प्लांट का हाई है तब क्या होगा तो जब वाटर पोटेंशियल हाई है तो उस टाइम क्या होगा जो वाइल्ड टाइप सीडलिंग था उसके अंदर जो शूट का ग्रोथ है वो ज्यादा अमाउंट में होगा एज कम्पेयर टू दी ए बी ए डेफिशेंट म्यूटेंट और ऐसा क्यों हो रहा है कि वाइल्ड टाइप में शूट का ग्रोथ अच्छे खास अमाउंट में हो रहा है इन कंडीशन वन एवर देर हाई वाटर पोटेंशियल और जो ए बी ए डेफिशेंट म्यूटेंट है उसके अंदर जो शूट का ग्रोथ है वो रिड्यूस हो गया है ऐसा क्यों हुआ है क्योंकि अभी हमने जस्ट स्ट्रेस के कंडीशन में हमने एक चीज पढ़ा कि जो ए बी ए होता है वो वाटर का जो ट्रांसपीरेशन होता है यानी उसका जो लॉस होता है उसे मिनिमाइज करता है तो इस वे में वो स्ट्रेस कंडीशन में हेल्प करता है क्योंकि वो प्लांट की बॉडी से जो वाटर लॉस होता है उसे पूरा का पूरा मिनिमाइज कर देता है तो वाइल्ड टाइप कंडीशन में क्या हो रहा है कि ए बी ए का सिंथेसिस अच्छा खासा अमाउंट में हो रहा है इसीलिए जो भी वाटर प्लांट गेन कर रहा है उस वाटर को ए बी ए क्या कर रहा है हेल्प कर रहा है कि वो ट्रांसपीरेशन के थ्रू लॉस ना हो जाए बॉडी से और अगर प्लांट बॉडी से वाटर लॉस नहीं हो रहा है तो ऑब्वियसली वो वो जो वाटर है वो किस में यूज होगा प्लांट की ग्रोथ में यूज होगा फाइन इसीलिए जो शूट का ग्रोथ है वो ज्यादा अमाउंट में देखा जा रहा है इन केस ऑफ अ वाइल्ड टाइप लेकिन जो हमने म्यूटेंट लिया है दैट इज द ए बी ए डेफिशन म्यूटेंट उस म्यूटेंट में कौन सी प्रॉपर्टी है कि वो ए बी ए बायो सिंथिस नहीं कर सकता तो एज बिकॉज यहाँ पे ए बी ए का सिंथिस ही नहीं होगा तो यहाँ पे कोई भी ऐसा कंपाउंड नहीं होगा जो कि वाटर लॉस को प्रिवेंट कर सके फ्रॉम द लीव सर्फेस ओके यानी यहाँ कहीं भी ट्रांसपीरेशन जो प्रोसेस है उसका इनिबिशन नहीं होगा और ट्रांसपीरेशन से अच्छा खासा अमाउंट ऑफ जो वाटर होता है वो लॉस्ट हो जाता है फ्रॉम आ प्लांट बॉडी और द लीव लीव सर्फेस तो ए बी ए डेफिशन म्यूटेंट में ये ट्रांसपीरेशन का इनहिबिशन ना होने के कारण एक्सेस अमाउंट में वाटर लॉस हो जाएगा उसी कारण क्या होगा जो शूट पार्ट है प्लांट का उसे प्रॉपर अमाउंट में वाटर नहीं मिलेगा इसीलिए जो उसका ओवरऑल ग्रोथ है वो हो जाएगा रिड्यूस्ड या फिर कम हो जाएगा तो इसीलिए जब भी वाटर का पोटेंशियल ज्यादा होता है उस टाइम जो वाइल्ड टाइप होता है वाइल्ड टाइप प्लांट उसमें शूट का ग्रोथ ज्यादा देखा गया और जो ए बी ए म्यूटेंट सीडलिंग था उसमें शूट का ग्रोथ जो है वो कम देखा गया और इसका अपोजिट कंडीशन जबकि वाटर पोटेंशियल जो है वो लो रहेगा तो उसमें क्या होगा तो उसमें वो कंडीशन होगा जो कि फर्स्ट कंडीशन का टोटली अपोजिट होगा यानी जो शूट ग्रोथ है वो ज्यादा होगा इन केस ऑफ अ ए बी डेफिशन म्यूटेंट और जो ओवरऑल शूट ग्रोथ है वो कम हो जाएगा इन केस ऑफ अ वाइल्ड टाइप सो वी कैन से दैट दी अंडर द डिहाइड्रेटिंग कंडीशन और द लो वाटर पोटेंशियल एट दैट टाइम द ग्रोथ ऑफ अ रूट इज मच हायर इन अ वाइल्ड टाइप एज कम्पेयर टू द ए बी ए डेफिशन म्यूटेंट्स बिकॉज ऑल द वाटर इज गोइंग टू बी यूज बाई द ए बी ए डेफिशेंट म्यूटेंट इन लाइक ओवरऑल नरिशिंग दी शूट पार्ट सो देर विल बी अ लेस अवेलेबल वाटर फॉर द रूट पार्ट बट इन इन कंपेरिजन टू दी वाइल्ड टाइप द वाइल्ड टाइप इज नाउ हैविंग अ लो अमाउंट ऑफ अ वाटर फॉर द शूट दैट इज वाई देर विल बी अ हाई ग्रोथ और द हाई ओवरऑल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ रूट इन अ वाइल्ड टाइप प्लांट सो दैट इज वाई इट हैज बिन मैंशन दैट द ए बी ए इज गोइंग टू प्रमोट द रूट ग्रोथ एंड इनहिबिट द शूट ग्रोथ वेन एवर देर इज अ लो वाटर पोटेंशियल to summarize this point we can say that under the dehydrating condition when the aba level are high the endogenous hormone exert a strong positive effect on a root growth by suppressing the ethylene production and a slight negative effect on the shoot growth the overall effect is a dramatic increase in the root to shoot ratio at a low water potential so this you should remember that whenever there is a low water potential at that time there will be a dramatic increase in the root to shoot ratio that means the overall the value of a root will be the high and the shoot will be a low that is what uh, it is going to give rise to a high value of a root to shoot ratio at a low water potential the fourth function is in a dormancy and the seed germination and this aba used to inhibit the ga that is the gibberellic acid so now let's see how this aba is going to make its role in the dormancy and the seed germination so this aba is supposed to be known for the 
inhibiting the germination of a seeds as well as it used to promote the dormancy of a seed promoting the dormancy of a seeds means it used to promote the inactivation of that seeds while we were studying about the germination of a seeds in case of a gibberellic acid at that time we have seen that there is a synthesis of a different type of a hydrolytic enzyme that is going to make a activation or the breakdown of the dormancy of a seed and finally there will be a germination of a seeds with the help of a gibberellin but uh, the mechanism behind inhibiting the overall germination of a seeds is that the aba used to inhibit the synthesis of a hydrolytic enzyme that are essential for the breakdown of a storage reserve in a seeds for example the gibberellic acid used to stimulate the alveolar layer of a cereal grains to produce a alpha amylase and the other hydrolytic enzymes that used to break down the stored resources in the endosperm during the germination so what aba used to do it used to inhibit the ga or the gibberellic acid dependent enzyme synthesis by inhibiting the transcription of a alpha amylase mrna so if there is a no alpha amylase enzyme obviously there will be a no germination of a seeds is going to take place and this is a mechanism through which the aba used to maintain the dormancy or the inactivation of a seed so in this way in a laboratory if you want to see the seed germination at that time you have to minimize the level of a aba production and you have to increase the production of a gibberellin in that seeds okay and this is the condition when the seed germination is going to take place if you are applying the abscisic acids to any seeds that seed is not going to germinate and this condition you should remember that after applying a gibberellin the seed is going to germinate but if you are going to apply a abscisic acid on that seed that seed is not going to germinate so the ratio of this gibberellic acid or the gibberellin and the abscisic acid should be maintained in a proper amount if we want to see a germination in a seed the fifth function of the abscisic acid is in a hydraulic conductivity and the conductivity means decreasing the resistance of a water movement across the membrane so aba increase the hydraulic conductivity and iron flux of a root in response to a water stress the sixth important function is that the aba used to promote the leaf senescence independent of a ethylene so it is going to play a very important role in the overall senescence of a plant mainly the leaf senescence seventh point is that the aba accumulates in our dormant buds in woody species dormancy is an important adaptation features in a cold climate when a tree is exposed to a very low temperature in winter it protect its meristem with bird scale and temporarily stop bird growth so the aba was originally suggested as the dormancy inducing hormone because it accumulate in a dormant bud and decrease after the tissue is exposed to a low temperature the eighth function is aba promotes the desiccation tolerance in the embryo so an important function of this aba in our developing seed is to promote the overall desiccation tolerance mainly the desiccation can severely damage the membrane and the other cellular constituent so during the mid to late stages of the seed development specific mrna will going to be accumulate in our embryo at the time of a high level of a endogenous abscisic acid this mrna is going to encode a protein which is known as the lia okay or lea and the full form of this lia is the late embryogenesis abundant and this protein is going to involve in the desiccation tolerance of a embryo so the synthesis of many lia protein or the related family members can be induced by a abscisic acid treatment of either the young embryo or the vegetative tissue thus in this way the synthesis of most of the lia protein is under the aba control the last function of a aba is it used to help in the vv peri so the precocious germination of a seed in the fruit while still attached to a plant vv peri is a features of many aba deficient seeds so what happen actually the vv peri or the precocious germination means a particular seed is going to germinate while it is going to be attached with a parent plant okay and this i think you have seen in real life whenever like there is a exceptional case when you cut a tomato at that time you will see that there is a very tiny plant is already generated from that seeds so that is a good example of the vv peri or the precocious germination okay that means the seed is still attached to the parent plant but it is going to show the germination okay so this is what called the vv peri or the uh, precocious germination and this process is mainly going to happen whenever there is a deficient of a abscisic acid in our seeds now we are going to talk about the aba signaling in our stomatal closure and that, uh, this function we have seen whenever we were studying about the functions of our abscisic acid and this is the most important function that the aba used to make a inhibition of our stomatal opening or it used to promote the stomatal closure 
and if you talk about the involvement of a receptor in this ABA mode of action or the signaling so there is total of uh, I think three classes of a uh, ABA receptor which is going to uh, first class is going to be present on the plasma membrane second will be present on the plastid and third will be present in the cytosolic part so we are going to start with the first step that is the ABA used to bind to its receptor and that you can see from the figure the ABA is going to act as a ligand and it is going to bind to the receptor and after that there will be the overall signaling procedure is going to start. In the second step, the ABA binding will going to induce the formation of a reactive oxygen species like the uh, H2O2. Okay, So there will be a many reactive oxygen and I have just given you one example that H2O2 or the hydrogen peroxide is a, like a very important example of the ROS or the ROS or the reactive oxygen species. So in the second step you can see that the ABA binding is going to induce the formation of a reactive oxygen species which is going to activate the plasma membrane calcium channel. The third step is the ABA increases the level of a cyclic ADP ribose and the IP3 which activate the additional calcium channel on the tonoplast. Fourth step, the influx of a calcium initiate the intracellular calcium and promote the further release of a calcium from the vacuoles. The fifth step, the rise in the intracellular calcium will going to block the potassium in channel. That means the channel which is going to be there for the entry of a potassium inside a guard cell. As this diagram is a stomatal guard cell. In sixth step, the rise in the intracellular calcium will promote the chlorine out anion channel on the plasma membrane and cause the membrane depolarization. In seventh step, the plasma membrane proton pump is inhibited by the ABA induced increase in the cytosolic calcium and a rise in the intracellular pH which is further going to take a participation in depolarizing the membrane. In 8th step, the membrane depolarization is going to activate the potassium out channels. In the 9th step, it is mentioned that the potassium and the anions to be released across the plasma membrane are first released from the vacuole into the cytosol. So in this way, the stomatal closure is driven by a reduction in the guard cell turgor pressure caused by a large efflux of a potassium and the anion from a cell. The ABA inhibits the stomatal opening by increasing the cytosolic calcium concentration. And that mechanism you have already seen with each and every steps. So let's revise the overall process. So initially the stomatal closure is going to driven by the reduction in the guard cell turgor pressure which is going to be caused by the efflux of a potassium and the anion from a cell. This ABA is going to inhibit the stomatal opening by increasing the cytosolic calcium concentration. ABA stimulate the elevation in the concentration of a cytosolic calcium by inducing both influx through a plasma membrane channel and release of a calcium into the cytosol from an internal compartment such as the central vacuole. Increased cytosolic calcium activate the anion channel. Activation of an anion channel causes the efflux of an anion from a guard cell which causes the depolarization of a membrane. Changes in the membrane potential deactivate the potassium in channel and activate the potassium out channel resulting in the potassium efflux from a guard cell. And as a result there is a reduction in the guard cell turgor pressure and in this way the closure of a stomata is going to take place. Whatever the step I have just described with the help of a diagram, I have mentioned all the step in this slide. So if you are interested, then you can pause the video and you can go through that. Now we are going to talk about the question that we have taken from the CSINET 2014 June. So the question is, Arabidopsis thaliana seeds were plated on the Murashik scoop plate with or without a hormone added to the medium. Seed were found to germinate late in the hormone containing MS plate as compared to the MS plate without the hormone. So what they have did? They have taken the Murashik Skoog media and they have kept that media or they have kept that overall culture in a two plate. In the first plate, there is a presence of a seed along with one unknown hormone. And in second plate, they have plated only a seed without that unknown hormone. Now you have to identify that hormone and they have given the condition that the seeds were found to germinate late in the hormone containing MS plate as compared to the MS plate without the hormone. So the plate that is containing a hormone there was uh, supposed to show a late germination of a seed whereas the plate which is not having a hormone the overall germination of a seeds was very quick. So with this we can say that the hormone is somehow having the activity to maintain the dormancy of a seed and if we see the overall option that has been given here there is only a one hormone that is going to maintain the dormancy or the inactivation of a seed germination fine and that hormone is a abscisic acid that is the Option number fourth. 
the next question is from csinet 2014 december so the question is which one of the following statement regarding the seed germination of a wild type plant is not correct so somehow you have to pick a wrong statement for the wild type seed germination so the first statement is that the low abscisic acid and the high bioactive gibberellic acid can break the seed dormancy i think no one is going to have a doubt in this first statement this first statement is totally correct because if there is a very high concentration of a gibberellic acid obviously it is going to help in the breakdown of a seed dormancy and as because here there is a very low concentration of abscisic acid so it is not going to interfere in the breakdown of a seed dormancy so the first statement is correct the second statement is the light accompanied with a high temperature can break the seed dormancy so this has been never seen that the light along with the high temperature has the ability to break the seed dormancy if they were supposed to break the seed dormancy there will uh, there will be a, like no need to apply the gibberellic acid from the exogenous source because providing the light with a high temperature is much cheaper than the applying the gibberellic acid to a particular plant so the second statement is totally wrong because the light along with the high temperature is not going to help in the breakdown of a seed dormancy the third statement is the gibberellic acid induces the synthesis of a hydraulic enzyme in the cereal grains so this statement is totally correct and i don't think that there is a need of any kind of explanation because we have already seen all this event when we are studying about the overall germination of a seeds so this third statement is also correct fourth statement is the degradation of a carbohydrates and the storage protein provide the nourishment and the energy to support the seedling growth this statement is also true because overall the breakdown of this carbohydrate is supposed to be done with the help of a alpha amylase enzyme so the first third and the fourth statement is totally correct the second statement is wrong so our desirable answer is the answer number 2 because this is the statement which is not true for the seed germination in a wild type plant i hope this video was helpful for you if you like the video then put a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe the channel thank you for watching this video